Bang, bang. What's up, guys? Lunch money time. What's it? Tuesday. While Wall Street's trying to get rich, the rest of us just trying to get our lunch money right. I am here with the beautiful and intelligent Plinia Marinova, or also known as Walt Disney. <laughs> I have no clue why she has on a tie-dye Mickey shirt. Your but mom gave me that. My mom gave yeah. you that? Oh, it was probably to see if you were actually going to wear it or not. So well, now, I did. now she's got proof. Wait, she really gave you that? Yeah. Oh, all right. I'll have a conversation with my mother. <laughs> we don't need that type of fashion going on around here. Black t-shirts only. This is a uh, uniform violation. All right. What's going on with the uh, having? You spelled it right. Um, We have halved. We have halved? Yes. The Bitcoin having? It has haven't. Okay. Do you remember Get what it? it means? Yes. What? Um, The mining stuff gets cut in half. The number of incoming Bitcoin? Yep. From how many? Oh, oh, from 21 million. No, no there's 21 million total. From 8,000? No. Ah, uh, to we, 900? To 900 is correct, yeah, but from that. 1,800. Oh, 1,800. That's 50% right. drop. So the Bitcoin halving occurred, oh. uh, the third ever. Um, it's basically, if uh, you understand quantitative easing, easing uh, which is basically the printing of more money, devaluing a currency, uh, think of the Bitcoin halving as quantitative hardening, right? Is actually less and less supply being um, being put into the system, very similar to what would happen if today the Federal Reserve decided to go in the opposite direction of what they're doing. Uh, it would, over time, actually make the currency more valuable. Uh, so that occurred yesterday, went from 1,800 Bitcoin a day to 900. We are off to the races. Four years from now, we will get another halving. Um, but I think uh, it was just a big deal that it actually Wait, occurred. What was what was that? You said that it'll happen in like 120 years, like all the Bitcoin will be mined. So think of like half-life in uh, science, right? The half Half-life is, you know, periodically every time it cuts in half. That's basically what's happening with Bitcoin. Start at 50 Bitcoin, 25, 12 and a half, 6.25, and it'll keep yeah. going. It'll take all the way till 2140, the year 2140, for it to actually have all of the 21 million Bitcoin out into the system. Long mm, time. Crazy. Will, well, we, will we be around to see that? I'll, I'll be 151 years old. <laughs> I won't be, but you'll be cryogenically frozen, so you might be. Woo, bang, bang. All right, what's going on with Quibi? This is my favorite story. Freaking Quibi, man. Did I not call this? Did I not call this? We said it on lunch money. Before it even launched. So All right, now, so what happened? So Quibi is a short form video. It's the whole idea of 10 minutes or less, and you watch it on your phone. And they literally raised $1.8 billion to go do this. Now, there's two people behind it that are very, very intelligent, very successful, Jeffrey Katzenberg and Meg Whitman. But... Every single millennial that ever heard about this idea literally said, why do I need that? That's not going to work. They raised $1.8 billion. How many downloads did they get? So it's a paid app. So even with a, nine, a free 90-day trial, the app has been installed by only 2.9 million customers. They claim it's 3.5 million, but the yeah. data analytics firms say 2.9. So either way, it's around three to three and a half million. 1.8 billion dollars they got three million downloads this is comical guess what the excuse is as to why it hasn't worked so jeff katzenberg goes i attribute everything that has gone wrong to coronavirus everything and then when the reporter said well what about tiktok <laughs> <laughs> the other short form video app that has been downloaded two billion times he said that's like comparing apples and submarines you can't can't compare that they're not the same Yes, they are. <laughs> Literally, they're watching videos on their phone, dummy. So, <laughs> I mean, look, this, this, and by the way, like, I actually think that Jeff Katzenberg is incredibly smart. I think Meg Whitman's incredibly, incredibly smart. But this is classic so problem of where arrogance takes over. Just because you've been successful before doesn't mean you're going to be successful now. And again, if you remember the Lunch Money episode where we talked about this previously, I can only think of one company ever that raised hundreds of millions or billions of dollars pre-product being launched and ended up being successful. And that was jet.com oh, and yeah. jet.com got bought by Walmart mainly because they wanted Mark Lore to go work there. But other than that, I can't think of a single company that has been able to raise hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. What's the other company that certainly ain't magic leap <laughs> magic leap getting crushed as well. They try to sell the company in a fire or it wasn't a fire. sale. they try to sell for $10 billion. Nobody bit. And so now they're like basically selling it off in parts. They're laying off their staff. Like, the, every time you see companies raise tons and tons of money before they ever launch the product, it almost never works. But, so here's the thing. Like I can see how their thinking got them here because they thought 
we're literally going to call every single celebrity I know because Jeffrey Katzenberg basically has access to all of them. I remember a report. Somebody said, if you didn't get a call, if you're a celebrity, you didn't get a call from Jeff for the for Quibi. Like, are you even famous? So basically, it was kind of like a popularity contest. They all got on there. It was supposed to be high quality content. Maybe it is high quality content. But people aren't watching. It's like Luminary. If anybody uh, heard of this company called Luminary, they had a very similar strategy, which was the whole idea was be the Netflix for podcasts. So basically you'd pay 10 bucks and you'd get all these podcasts that were behind a paywall, very similar to Netflix. And uh, what they did is they went and got a bunch of celebrities and they said, hey, you celebrities, why don't you create content behind the put it behind this paywall? But nobody really signed up. Like it didn't work. And again, it's the same thing. It's the wrong product. I don't care how famous people are behind a paywall. If it's the wrong product, if people don't want that, then they are not going to pay for it. And the reason why this doesn't work is you have people who they're very, very smart. They've been very successful in their life. But what got you here isn't necessarily going to get you there. Right. And you can't sit and look at, oh, because I've been so successful in the past, that means I'm a genius and I understand what's going on now. It's a new game. This digital world, it's screwing up all of these legacy players. They don't know what to do. They're literally, there's YouTubers who have bigger audiences than all of the nightly shows combined. Also, also it bothers me. The whole thing with Quibi that bothers me is, oh, this is for millennials. This is what millennials do. Dude, do you realize millennials are like in their 30s? You're talking about Gen Z. That should be your target demographic. Yeah, well, that's why TikTok won. Right. Like it's over. It, it, it's over. KO. Game over. TikTok won on the mobile video front. Uh, and here's the thing is it'll be easier for TikTok to actually go from what is it a minute long video or 30 second video, whatever the hell they have to five or 10 minute videos than it will be for Quibi to get any penetration Completely in the market. Completely agree with this. Oh, really? Yes. Nice. Do um, we agree? It must be because you have on that Walt Disney shirt. This what? is where you say it's not a Walt Disney shirt. It's a no, Mickey it actually, Mouse shirt. It actually is a Walt Disney shirt. I know, but, oh. but Walt Disney yeah, created well. Mickey Mouse. Do you know that he hand drew Mickey Mouse the first time? I love time? Mickey. Yeah, do you know that he yes, hand drew it? Did you know that he used to hand draw a Minnie Mouse as well? Yeah, and then he would like flip, like he, he would draw them and then it would be like fast and that's how the cartoon, yeah. Anyway, uh, Elon is asking to be arrested. Elon Musk is a gangster, straight up, period. Like the dude said, you know what? I'm not playing this game anymore. There's federal laws, state laws, and local laws. They don't agree with each other on what you should do around reopening your business. And so Elon said, I'm going to reopen my business. And not only am I going to reopen the business, but again, as we talked in the past about good leadership, he said, I'm not going to ask my workers to do anything that I'm unwilling to do. I'm going to go work on the front line with them in the factory. And if the cops want to show up, they can come arrest me. Wait, I have a question. How is it that when you have conflicting laws on the federal, state, and local level, <clears throat> how are you supposed to know what to follow? Well, that that's the one of the big challenges here. It's like marijuana laws, right? Like, so technically, marijuana is illegal at the federal level, yeah. But in in Colorado, for example, it's not, okay. right? Or you even get a place like uh, take Baltimore. Baltimore actually it is illegal on the books that uh, for marijuana. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the federal level, it's illegal. But what the district attorney has said is I'm not going to enforce the law. I basically I'm going to decriminalize it through enforcement, not by changing the Got law. It. So basically what's happening here is Elon's calling their bluff. He says, OK, cool. You guys are you're uh, Alameda County, the county, right. uh, local county uh, people. You're going to come arrest me. OK, fine. I'll mm -hmm. see you on the on the floor. Now, what's really interesting about this, though, is his factories are very um, high tech. They've got tons of right. robots and stuff. So he actually has lower amount of people in there than most car factories would have. But on top of that, he's willing to go on the front lines and so are the workers. Well, so here's what's interesting. Uh, we watched an interview with Tramoth this morning where he said, it appears to me that uh, the county officials don't want to sit down with him and have a conversation about, OK, you want to open your factory. How are you going to do it safely? How are you going to test people? Are you going to wear masks? Like all that stuff. Instead, they're kind of just shunning him and saying, we don't even want to have a conversation with you. And we're going to say F you on Twitter. Here's what the world is learning is somebody like Elon Musk has more money and a bigger audience than the media or the politicians. Elon Musk has more power than they have. Do you and think what, power is audience? Right now, what Elon Musk is doing is Elon Musk is playing a game that the politicians can't win. And the whole thing is that there is a very large percentage of the population of, of the citizens of the United States who agree with Elon Musk. And he knows that. And so what he's basically doing is he's calling the bluff of the politicians because any politician that steps in and arrests Elon Musk, 
their career is over, <laughs> right? And he's he's basically saying you're being dumb, or- and normally we would have to sit back and play by your rules, but I am in a position where I can push back. And this is the beauty of a, a democracy, right? Is that not any one group has total power. So people check Elon Musk's power, right? The politicians have their power check. Law enforcement has their power check. The media has their but power you're check. Say, you're kind of saying that Elon Musk is above the law. I'm not saying that because they could go arrest him. But there's consequences to taking that action. It's a very complex system and there's checks and balances throughout the whole thing. But again, do you want to go arrest a guy who he actually has a safety plan in place? It's not like he's saying, hey, everyone just go back. They have social distancing. They have masks. Like they're taking a bunch of precautions. His point is your rules are dumb. And they're arbitrary. They're not applicable. Of course. Because his other factory is actually open. So it's okay for one factory to be open in the state, but not in another state, right? It's it's all stupid. Yeah, it's all all stupid. So one one last thing that's really important here, though, I think, is on top of all this, I saw um, there's this BuzzFeed reporter. I'm not even going to name who he is, but just absolute stupidity, right? Like he, he's the classic person who just wants to attack tech all people right, and right, billionaires yeah. and investors, all this kind of stuff. And he said, oh, have you ever seen Elon Musk do anything that isn't self-serving, right? The only reason why he wants to open this is because it's self-serving. But what people forget is Elon Musk runs a publicly traded company that has shareholders. Those shareholders are depending on the company to produce a product that is sold so that they can drive revenue, so they can drive a profit, so the share price increases and they can make a return. That's the whole point of business. And so this whole idea of like, oh, this is just for the individual benefit of Elon Musk, yeah. that's not true. But someone's going to say, oh, I don't care about rich people making money and whatever. How about 55% of Americans that own stocks? What are, are, Should we just screw them too? I don't know. Because the government's <laughs> coming to save you? I I tend to agree with you here, but I don't want to get into a semantics. Polina argument. doesn't like all the political talk. Um, all right, grocery cost. Wait, one more thing about Elon. Do you think he'll actually get arrested? No. You don't think so? It it would be career suicide for a politician. And but, Elon Musk would go from uh, well-liked on the internet to literally like the internet hall of fame. But, if there's a photo of Elon ah. Musk walking out of a factory uh, in handcuffs, are you kidding me? But don't you think it's also political suicide to not carry out what you have mandated? No, because nobody actually believes that the politicians believe what they're saying. Oh. Like the, the politicians are saying things. It, it's like uh, Bill de Blasio. Bill de Blasio is saying that protests are banned in New York City. He's doing that for personal benefit. Andrew Cuomo, clown town. Literally, the things that he's saying is all for political benefit. People see, again, the virus is exposing the shams of society, and people realize that what is happening is the politicization of the virus and the economic crisis. They don't want to help the people. They literally are doing it for power and control. Because if you wanted to help the people, you know what you would do? You would actually help the people by giving them money. You would reopen the economy in, in, a, in a very intelligent and safe way. You would do the things that are necessary to actually provide benefit. But instead, what we have is we have a government that wants the people to be more dependent on them. All right. Let's not talk about politics anymore. Grocery costs jump the most in 46 years, led by rising prices for meat and eggs. Actually, I have a personal story about this. I went to the grocery store twice in one week. No, actually, three times in two weeks. When I, when I wasn't here, you yeah. were you were grocery I was, shopping? I was grocery shopping away. <laughs> had myself a night. Um, so there is a meat or, or a beef shortage. That's why we had chicken meatballs the other day. <laughs> she made chicken meatballs and tried to pass them off as meatballs. <laughs> well, and I said, well, you can't call them well, chicken meatballs because they're just chicken balls. No, they're meatballs. Chicken is meat. Yeah, but they're chicken balls. No. Yeah. Other, what are they, the other ones? Beef balls? Yeah, well, that, you usually make a meatball with beef. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gotta call them chicken balls. Well, you're lucky I didn't get another kind of meat because there's all sorts of stuff. But do you want to make sausage balls? <laughs> Please don't. This so listen, the, weird... the rising <laughs> prices for meat and eggs. Here's what's really interesting. This is all happening in a deflationary environment. So obviously, it's supply and demand. If there's a yeah. shortage of a, of a supply, then and demand stays constant or rises, price will go up. That's what's happening right look here. This. Look at this. Yeah. So we're seeing a, a huge increase in prices. How big is the percentage increase? 2.6%. So it's it's high, but it's not super, super high yet. If we were in an inflationary environment where the dollar was being devalued against meat and eggs and other groceries, then all of a sudden you would have more social unrest. This is what's happening in Lebanon. Is In Lebanon, they literally are having their currency devalued and the food prices Wait, are exploding. Is it, but you said deflationary environment. Aren't we in inflationary? We're in a deflationary Why? environment because the dollar is getting stronger. and Even other- though we're printing more money. You're yeah, saying in yes. relation to other currencies. So this is a nuance. 
it, over a long period of time, if you print money, it will lead to an inflationary right. environment. But, in the, but in the short term, the reason why they have to print so much money is because we're in a deflationary environment. There's a need. The, the easiest way to think about deflation is uh, everyone wants dollars, right? They want the safety of dollars. They want the, the, the peace of mind of dollars. So they look around and everyone says, where are the dollars? But there's not enough dollars available, right? In all these different forms and markets. And so the government steps in and says, oh, we don't have enough dollars. I'll print a bunch more dollars and put them into the market in all these different places so that now I can satisfy the need for dollars, mm -hmm. right? So we can go from a deflationary environment back to inflationary because in deflation, nobody spends, everyone holds the assets. You need inflation to spur economic activity, right? That, that's the thought process. And so literally, if we had the inflationary environment right now and food costs going up, there would be social unrest just like you're seeing in Lebanon because people wake up and they say, I, I don't have enough money to, to afford food. Yeah, that's crazy. So thankfully, we're in the deflationary environment while there's a shortage. Hopefully, what will happen is that the shortage of food will go away once uh, there's easier trade, transportation, and everything after the coronavirus. Do you feel like you just got a crash course in food economics? Why well, you always got to ask that? I, I'm smart. I know. You're smarter than I am. <laughs> okay. I am, for the record. Um why are you looking at my shirt? <laughs> uh, okay. You, I can't take you seriously <laughs> while you have a Mickey Mouse shirt on. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's going on with uh, Amazon? Um, so uh, AMC shares are soaring 50% on reports slash rumors uh, that they've had buyout talks with Amazon. It's important to note that this is an un- Confirmed report uh, by the Daily Mail, which is a British tabloid, but all these other um, uh, media organizations are investigating it. Nobody from Amazon or AMC is talking, but the shares of AMC are shooting through the roof. What are they going to do if they buy them? Take over the world. <clears throat> Sorry. I don't know what's going Did on. Did you have a voice crack? <laughs> <laughs> Take over. The okay. Could you imagine a world where Amazon owns movie theaters? And they're like, you know what? At our movie theater, you can watch all the crap you want to watch, but we're going to discount our movies. Uh, that's one way to think about it. The, so they're, they've done this playbook before, right? Mm -hmm. Amazon was getting into grocery, and then they went and they bought physical retail uh, space with Whole Foods. It was a massive, it was like $13 billion acquisition. Uh, they've now gotten very, very heavily into movies. So they've got two types of uh, things that they're doing. One is Amazon Prime Video. Uh, you can go on. They actually have a pretty good selection of movies. Uh, if you're a Prime member, I think it's like 100 bucks a year or whatever, uh, you can get access to it. But second is they've made a ton of investment in Amazon Original Studios, which is uh, how they make a lot of the original series. So them and Netflix are fighting it out to create this stuff. It would be super interesting for three things. One, if they said we are going to release all of our originals in AMC right, uh, right. places first. So the only way to watch it is to go into the AMC but, but movie why, theater. Why do they want people to go physically in person? Because there are some people who still will go in person. Two is they could say you actually, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can go for free or for a massive That's discount. What I was saying. The Prime business is incredible. If you look at Amazon Prime or Costco's model, where they have you know sixty to hundred dollar type annual memberships, these businesses print money, and so all they're trying to do is pull more value behind that Prime membership. Yeah. And then the other thing that they could say is uh, movie theaters are so antiquated, we're just going to come at it with a better technological you know perspective, and we're going to drastically improve the experience and get people back in a socially distanced way. Well, don't worry. In New York, uh, Cuomo said that drive-in movie theaters are uh, open for business. Are there drive-in movie theaters in New York not City? In, I don't. Not in New York uh, City. I mean, New York all right, State. Cuomo. Um, tell, okay. tell, uh, just keep going. Just, what? Speaking of uh, corruption and uh, thief, what? What's going on <laughs> with the bear thief? He stole people's freedom. Okay. Okay. Calm down. You're as salty as Elon Musk. I am. Because they're, um, they're, they're hurting small business owners. Let the people go back to work and make a living. By the way, if Andrew Cuomo was a real leader, he'd give up his salary until small business could go back to work. You tell him. Yeah. Tell him. Think about it. Small businesses, he extended the lockdown till uh, June 6th, I believe. So almost three full months. Andrew Cuomo has been getting paid and taking his salary for 90 days while he shut down the ability for small business owners to make a living. That's not leadership. So he shouldn't make a living? Well, it, why are you asking your constituents to do something you're unwilling to do for yourself? That's a fair point. Elon Musk is willing to go on the factory floor and risk getting coronavirus to open his business. Okay, 25 seconds. What's Ready? going on with the bear thief? What is a bear thief? This theme? bear broke into this Gatlinburg, is that in Tennessee? I think it is, uh, cabin and stole peanut butter cups, M&Ms, 
Sour Patch Kids, and beer. This literally sounds like you in a bear costume. I was just <laughs> going to say, that literally sounds like my spirit animal. <laughs> what did he steal? Like, literally everything you like. Peanut butter cups, M&M's, and M&M, Sour Patch Kids, and beer. Like, oh, yeah. Those are his, like, yeah. Me and that bear would get along. Can you imagine if you walked into the woods and saw me and a bear chilling, just drinking some beers and eating Sour Patch Kids? No, but why are bears <laughs> always looking for the candy? I'm so confused. Because it's sweet. It's the same reason why humans are. Where it's addicting. A bit thirsty, taking two beers and two Diet Cokes. Oh, there Ooh. Were two bears. Ooh, he w- hit you with two alcoholics and two <laughs> non-alcoholic drinks. The bears also took off with some allergy medicine. Oh, these are smart bears. They took medicine, <laughs> they took beer, they took Coke, and they took candy. Those guys are going to have a party. There is no social distancing what, going on in bear land. What would you do if you walked into your cabin and you saw these like bears getting into candy? Oh, I'd be like, hey, save me some. <laughs> <laughs> if they were getting the beer, I'd be like, hey, hey, chill out over there. All right, listen, you got to leave a couple for me. You guys, one time I asked him something about like what his favorite animal was. And you said something like like a worm or a sloth or something. Remember? What? Yeah. No, I don't remember that. Okay, I remember. A chameleon. <laughs> exactly. I said a chameleon. <laughs> exactly. You know why? Because chameleons can be successful in any environment. Fact. They just, they just kind of move and shake. They change their colors, you know, do whatever they got to do. Do you know my favorite animal? What? You know it. What? Dolphin. What, what noise does a dolphin make? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But tell and them now, the story very quickly. We ran out of time, but tell them the story very quickly about when you went to uh, meet a dolphin and cried. Oh my God. So my mom took me to the Bahamas because I love dolphins and we met a dolphin named Missy and I got to pet her and like look into her eyes and then she like splashed me. It was the like literally the best moment in my life. I can't even describe. Literally. I tried to do all kinds of nice things for Polina <laughs> and she went and met a dolphin and, and, and then and all of my, all of my work was just erased from her memory. You, you're fine. Do you think Misty misses Missy, you? Missy. Missy misses you? Yes. And she was like such a social dolphin that she would hang out with us and then like swim away to go see what her friends were doing. And then, be fine and then come back she she needs to socialize yeah all right go follow missy <laughs> on uh tiktok i'm sure she's got a fucking tiktok going uh that's it for today for lunch money well while she's trying to get rich the rest of us just trying to get her lunch money right we will talk to you guys tomorrow bye